Hello all, uh, thank you for coming here today. Uh, my name is Zorana Milidrag and I'm president of uh, e-commerce association of Serbia and also uh, global e-commerce director in uh, sport vision uh, company. Um, I know that um, Actually, uh, our region, Adria region, is not uh, so well known uh, about the collaboration. Uh, but if we uh, judge this e-com uh, cover, actually, by the e-com cover, uh, the book, I can say that uh, actually we have really good synergy uh, pattern uh, between us. Uh, today, uh, I, have, I will start uh, from there, uh, not from you even, sorry, but because <laughs> you are mine, I don't want to uh, be rude. So we have um, Nikola Ilchev, uh, uh, founder of the Bulgarian uh, e-commerce academy, uh, then uh, Marcel uh, from uh, e-commerce association of uh, Croatia, and uh, Ivan uh, Tanasković uh, from uh, as a director of uh, Serbian e-commerce association. I'm really sorry that today we don't have a uh, Bosnian and North Macedonian team because then you can actually see what real uh, collaboration looks like. And uh, fun fact is uh, actually that Serbian e-commerce association was found on the call of one call of Marcel and with the huge help of uh, Nina from uh, North Macedonian uh, association. So I can say that uh, uh, we definitely started uh, uh, this collaboration from the very beginning and um, our synergy. Uh, today we are going to have uh, three major topics. First one uh, is uh, going to be uh, what are the maturity of the markets between the countries. Uh, to hear three points of view. Then we have education, uh, both from the part of the business and from the part of the customer. And the third topic is actually uh, the one about synergy and collaboration. Um, I can say, as I uh, said at the, at the beginning, that we have really good synergy between uh, all of us, and actually the business is having that synergy. Uh, but today I would like also to point out what are maybe the opportunities we can also discuss with authorities who can actually uh, enable this uh, synergy and collaboration much, uh, much better and in a different uh, sense. Okay, our first topic about the maturity. I hear quite often that uh, our market is not that developed, our customers don't understand everything. Uh, if I would sell in EU markets, that would be totally uh, different. When we look at the numbers the, uh, from Statista, for example, in 2021, uh, e-commerce market in uh, European Union was uh, 730 uh, billion euros. Uh, so we should definitely start thinking about expanding the market, but maybe we should start from uh, CEFTA or Adria region. Maybe we don't have that big cake of European Union, but maybe we can actually focus on the Adria region and uh, try to develop all of our uh, current uh, markets. Uh, when we talk about uh, that customer, uh, the one from um, EU, I would start uh, with Nicola. Can you please explain us uh, how that customer actually look like and what should we look for, like uh, hope for uh, that we are going to one day get, hopefully. Thank you for the question and uh, I would like say, to say that uh, I'm very pleased to be here with you today and have a great discussion. Uh, if I have to speak about the customer in the EU part of our region, which is obviously Greece, Bulgaria, where I come from, and Romania, and uh, yeah, uh, later on probably Marcel will cover a little bit about Croatia and Slovenia, uh, but in our part, uh, the customer just got a little bit better educated after the COVID pandemic. It, it, it is not like they didn't know about uh, uh, technology, they didn't know how to use internet, but nowadays uh, we see a lot more uh, searches, a lot more people uh, are using uh, internet as their first destination when they have to uh, find a product. And uh, this has its pros and cons because uh, 
uh, by being uh, better educated on how to use uh, the digital world to find their products, people are having actually uh, better uh, researches and uh, if a company wants to get uh, to those markets and get uh, the attention of those customers, uh, they should uh, be having great offers, great prices, uh, gr great uh, uh, quality of the products. Uh, so, so it is like in our region, we are all price sensitive, I would say. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is that, uh, you know, they're also very uh, uh, time sensitive uh, and okay. in terms of uh, uh, deliveries, uh, they're payment sensitive in terms of uh, this that uh, our region, no matter that we are in the European Union for so such a long period of time, we, we still don't... Uh, uh, use so much uh, card payments uh, or bank transfers, so everything is uh, like a, a huge percentage is cash on delivery, uh, which you is... You maybe know uh, what is actually the percentage, uh, for example, in Bulgaria or Romania. In Bulgaria and Romania, it is, it, is, it is getting lower, but it's uh, approximately 60 to 70 percent varies uh, from the country. In Bulgaria, it's uh, almost 70 it's percent. Card. 60% of the card cash, or cash? Cash, cash on, on delivery. delivery. Marcel, and what is, uh, sorry, what is the, the percentage in Croatia? Well, if you, ask, you some... if you ask the buyers, they will say that uh, most of them prefer to pay with card. Oh. But if you ask the sellers, they will say that like 50 to 80% of all uh, online orders are cash on delivery. And in Serbia even? Like 10, <laughs> 15? <laughs> yeah, 10 to 15 uh, are the cards, and the rest is... Deliver. Okay, sorry. So it's pretty pretty similar, but there is a, a difference, and uh, there is something that everybody should know. When a foreign company need wants to start in Bulgaria, Romania, and Greece, uh, they should focus on uh, having a local payment solution because the customers are always looking uh, if they want to pay with a card. They are always looking on what exactly the payment uh, provider is, who is the what, what's the brand. So I saw the presentation uh, earlier. And uh, if uh, this uh, payment solution is on our market, uh, they don't have a chance. If I go somewhere or the regular customer go on a website and see that payment solution, they might be, you know, well, this is not something I, I know. This is not uh, a company I, I can rely on. So, so it's probably, a mat matter of trust. Yes. So probably this is uh, something that also increased uh, the, the cash on delivery. Okay. Thank you. Uh, even uh, when we look at Serbian market, uh, actually, uh, three years ago during the pandemic, actually b before the pandemic, we had um, e-commerce on the level of uh, statistical error. Uh, can you say what is actually happening now? And uh, because I, I think at this moment, every business, uh, serious business, they have um, e-commerce as well. So can you tell us, uh, did the e-commerce life started now in Serbia? Yeah. And what is the, the uh, approximately size of the market, if you can uh, share some yes. info with us? Yes, thank you. Just to say hi to all. Uh, just to mention, you... you in one sentence, you pronounce the pandemic word two, two times, and I, I know how you hate it. So, um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, you're right. The pandemic uh, has made uh, the mind mind change shift uh, towards online, not only for consumers in Serbia, but also uh, for the decision makers in companies. And uh, we see that that change, um, of course couple of uh, our colleagues from the e-commerce association board of the directors actually talked about this maybe five or some of, some of us in even 10 years and even now you're surprised to see the change mm -hmm. finally and I say that the change not even uh, come only to Serbia but also the Balkan region as well so we see that on the market and the numbers actually confirms that basically we did uh, the analysis from the numbers that is provided from national bank of serbia and uh, actually in the to uh, into 2022 in serbia we had a uh, uh, 42 million uh, online transactions paid by card uh, and uh, that is a value uh, uh, around 1.2 billion euros and if we took that percentages on the first question roughly around 10 percent for example that is the tenth of the market value so basically even though we are very 
young market uh, in the terms of e-commerce. I would say that approximately value of 10 billion euros, it's very good from the market. And this is a roughly um, percentage and roughly value, but I think that is very good for the small market as, as Serbia. Yeah, that just started yeah. their life, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marcel, uh, Croatia is in the middle of uh, European Union we are talking about so much, even though uh, it's the topic is Adria region, but uh, can you say that actually e-commerce uh, is also in the middle of uh, Europe and maybe if you have some data regarding how what is the percentage or what is the value of the Croatian players selling outside of uh, Croatia? And, uh, sorry, I have three questions in one, <laughs> but <laughs> everything that comes on my mind. Uh, and um, if you can share with us um, about the, the Croatian habits, uh, do they uh, prefer to buy um, online from the local pl pl players or uh, they are actually uh, ordering uh, more from uh, the, the foreign uh, players. Okay, I, I don't know where to start, but I'll just start, no, no, start speaking from wherever, so you yeah. can ask uh, questions. Anyway, uh, if you look at the uh, web shops only, the quality of web shops, we are doing uh, certifications for six years now, uh, five years, uh, and also we are doing ecom awards uh, for five years. And we can see that uh, most of our uh, Retailers, web shop owners have really uh, quality web shops. And also, uh, we have meetups every month uh, presenting new uh, tools, new strategies, new tactics. They, they like to be in trend. They like to follow everything. They are really trying really hard to, uh, to become better. And also, they are really, uh, if you ask me, trustworthy. 99% of them are basically uh, following all the guidelines and they uh, only what they need to do is when they uh, become a member of our association is they get a trust mark if they oblige, uh, how do you say that, to all the guidelines we have. But most of them are pretty good. But if you look at the revenues, of course, the situation is not like this. And the problem isn't uh, because of the sellers. The problem is the market. It's a small market and 50% uh, of them are selling online, uh, uh, cross-border. 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 50%. 50%. We That's made a our research, I will present it uh, later. Uh, but the big problem is uh, why more of them are not selling uh, cross-border is because of the high logistic uh, costs. It's the number one reason, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you ask the Croatian buyers, also because we made our research among uh, buyers, 50% of them are buying locally, 50% are buying cross-border. But most of them uh, who buy like uh, big purchases like home uh, furniture, electronic devices, they buy locally. Why do they do that? Because of trust, because of uh, warranty, because of fast delivery, stuff like that. Me, my, myself, I have my own web shop that I started two years ago, and my pro I, it's a hobby project, I just do it. Uh, to make educations for sellers, but um, I took one product that uh, you can buy on Amazon for, I think, $30. I sell it for 70 uh, euros. And they still buy. Why do they do that? Because they trust you. It's not everything about price. Because they trust you, they want fast delivery, they want warranty, and they want, uh, I don't know, differentiation. We have a good story, you know. So I think that um, creation market is really uh, high up to the st European standards because I was traveling all over the conferences and when, for example, I was five years ago in Czech and in Poland, somebody asked, like, how did you manage to make such uh, a successful web shops? Uh, which tactics do you use? Tactics? No. We just uh, love what we do. You know? <laughs> so it's a big market, you know. Yeah, I think it's easier because of the market. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm... I'm doing this for 10 years, and I but see... But the competition is uh, bigger. There yes, on Czech competition market. is bigger, but also they have more buyers. I mean, we have 4 million uh, people, uh, maybe 500,000 of them are buying online, like seriously buying online, not like one time, you mm -hmm. know? So it's not, you, you should go cross-border if you want to make more money. This is the, the biggest issue is actually how to, how to start uh, selling uh, cross-border. Yeah. 
That's the thing, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about cross-border more later on. I would like, because you mentioned at the beginning that uh, education, and I think uh, maybe all of us would uh, say that uh, education is the biggest barrier in terms of uh, fast growth uh, in uh, our region, both customers and uh, the business. And uh, Nicola, this is your territory. <laughs> uh, you are the founder of uh, e-commerce academy in Bulgaria. Uh, so can you tell us uh, which uh, knowledge is uh, most common there in, uh, uh, in, in the business that are attending the, the academy? And where do you think, uh, what should they focus more, what should they learn more, and uh, which part they are not uh, putting enough uh, attention on? Like seven, eight years ago, when was the, we call it like a renaissance, not renaissance, but the love period for e-commerce in Bulgaria when everybody was starting this, you know, everybody was uh, seeing somebody doing something online and they were all asking how to do that, how, how to start. And most of the shops were born during probably 2014, 2018, something like this. Uh, everybody was, uh, you know, afraid how to, and was focusing on how to bring uh, traffic so they learned very well how to do um, advertisement online through the uh, social media, Google, everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and at some point they got very good in, on that. So this is not something we are focusing anymore because pretty much everybody knows how to do that. Uh, they use uh, digital agencies. Something that we see right now is that they should focus on customer support. This, this is something that uh, a lot of uh, e-com businesses are pretty much not having in their uh, model at all. Mm -hmm. you but can, do you think it is important for it's our region? It's very important support, because yeah. in my opinion, having the traffic coming in and uh, acquiring a customer, it's not enough because this might be a person that will buy once from you and we better than anybody know, else know that uh, just uh, having uh, a customer to buy from us once is very expensive. Once we have the customer with us, we have to make uh, his lifetime value uh, greater. So this means that we have to find tools to keep this customer and to earn as much as possible from, from him. So Reten this so is why- retention is really important. Yeah. Yes, and customer support is really important. Another thing that we should uh, teach our partners, uh, the, the shops and also the customers, actually customers are already aware of that, uh, are the legal, uh, is the legal side of the business. You cannot imagine how many businesses are not returning uh, the money in the, the period that they have to, they're not, uh, you know, treating their customers when they have problems. So this is something that we are focusing right now. And on the other side, uh, w when we talk about the, the education of the customer in terms of uh, digital, digital field, they know their rights. So customers, they already know their rights and they're uh, checking this. They're socially proving all the e-shops they're buying from. They're checking online if they have reviews, if they have comments on social media. So this is something very important and uh, this is very, something very common for Bulgaria, Romania, so our region basically. So once again, if somebody is uh, you know, focusing on those markets and wants to sell there, the company should be very well prepared in, in that area in my opinion. So if you want to go to that market? talk to Nicola. <laughs> and um, uh, Marcel, you're really into this topic. I think your academy is now for six years you have, uh, yeah. six years you have the academy. Um, can you tell us what is, and I know it is really important on, on creation market, you mentioned uh, previously like that uh, people trust you, they follow uh, what you tell them, not, not only in terms of getting the trust mark, but also to set up the business. Uh, what do you think uh, that uh, make uh, such a long life for your academy and uh, why is so important? What is the, the biggest value you are giving with that uh, academy to the businesses? It's not just about the academy. I mean, the academy was started two years after we founded the uh, association. But before that, we did the uh, um, education of the market through blogs, uh, through meetups, through researchers, stuff like that. Uh, academy was, to be honest, started because we needed to make money, because we are not funded by government or anybody. 
So uh, this, is our, this, this was our main goal, but what I found out after 12 uh, academies, uh, academy is actually uh, eight more, uh, lectures uh, provided by eight uh, professionals yeah, from the region. But it is in person. Of course, it's in person. We offer online educations, but I prefer that you come uh, uh, in person because, the, to be honest, the biggest value of uh, this kind of education is mentorship you get from these uh, people uh, that are giving you presentations. And they are all from business, the mm -hmm. mentors? Not only they are from business, they are in business like 10, 15, 20 years. Okay. And uh, when you sign up for our academy, you pay like 100 euros per, mo per lesson, which is five hours, and you get for free mentorship of this uh, person for the whole day, you work on your project, and uh, for the... Uh, whole academy, which is eight uh, weeks, you get free consultations. This is the biggest, biggest like uh, takeaway from the academy. Mm -hmm. And I always say to the people when you, when you come uh, to the academy, you will not learn how to uh, build a web shop. You can do this, you can buy a Udemy uh, education for five dollars and you can learn this. But what you can uh, learn from us is uh, how to avoid all the mistakes that we did. So ask questions, be involved, ask us uh, to look at your web shops, to, to make a case study on your project if you want to build a web shop or an online business, anything. We are here for you. So this is the biggest takeaway. This and our, of course, our uh, speakers, our lecturers, because they are with us since the beginnings and they are very well respected in the, in the, you know, in the audience Great, in the yeah. region. Because I'm asking, is it in person to, to, to give us the, the overview of the concept? Because in uh, Serbia, even, uh, can you tell us more about that? Uh, you actually started three years ago with the academy during the pandemic, and it uh, started online, like an online course. Uh, do you think is that that kind of approach is enough? And uh, uh, regarding the maturity of the, of the market, do you think is it enough just to go through that one course, or maybe there should be more courses uh, regarding the different maturity of the of the business and of the of the market. Yeah, very good question. Thank you. Uh, the guys uh, actually gave me very very good ideas. Good ideas <laughs> and entry entry for the for the my answer. Basically, after the three years, as you said, we started this in in pandemic and under that circumstances. The VOD, the video on demand platform, was a great solution. Zorana knows uh, knows the best how they they actually work I'm work it out. I'm here moderator. Just <laughs> I'm having that yeah. role today. Sorry. Yeah. So basically, the, the colleagues did a great job. Um, the the market actually loved that. The companies, uh, the merchants. Um, show very very good interest in the in the education but now after three years uh, we kind of felt it it should go even higher uh, actually we, we called it level up I I will talk about that even more in the presentation afterwards so basically uh, we kind of uh, making a concept for the new uh, level of the education for the experience Ecom and the digital managers, as well as the decision make makers who are going to, how to say, widen their views or find uh, how to grasp the new technology into their businesses or, and and so on. So basically, we are working on that, and uh, we are thinking that in the last quarter of this year we are going to have something similar. Marcel will having it now. So basic, basically, the the I'm. Um, I'm sharing your opinion, but the human touch in the education is very, it's very important. And uh, when you divide yourself from the, any abstractions, when you go to the classroom or on the, some um, hall with the, with the uh, presentations, it's much more, how to say that? Personal, you will learn, personal. yeah, it's personal you and more, you yeah. will learn more. So, Marcel, can you tell me, did you have maybe some repeated? Uh, uh, yes. Th that yes. was actually we the, the we question. We have a lot of companies understand. that are sending new people all the time, mm -hmm. you know, because they are satisfied. And but, but what is key here is uh, what Ivan said, uh, not only personal, but interaction, you know, interaction. because yes. if you are only listening, you will not get uh, what you paid for. Yeah. I don't want people to... 
Uh, I, I actually I was thinking about canceling the online stream, but they are asking me, constantly asking me, we will cancel the online stream of the conference. I'm, I'm, I'm all uh, for the networking, for the live events, but for the academy, I get it. It's not easy for people to travel from like Dubrovnik to Zagreb uh, eight times in a row, so that's a problem. But it's so hard to make uh, interactions with people that you don't see in the face mm -hmm. for the speakers you know and mm -hmm. and not only this i don't want to interrupt you but uh, we i recently found a study that uh, already with this all online learning and working and everything doing online people are trying to multitasking during uh, the exactly. session so they are maybe they're not cooking focused. they're yeah. maybe cooking they're maybe uh, babysitting and mm -hmm. they're watching a course which is uh, super important for them but uh, how important it can be if i'm cooking or changing a diaper, you know, this is... But what is your opinion about, I, I asked that to Ivan, but I want to hear your opinion about the different levels. For example, we started, you started six years ago in Serbia, it was three years ago, and now the business are on some level. They, there's, you, you cannot offer them the same education. You need to change something and uh, the, the e-commerce and the digital ecosystem is changing. Maybe you, you can tell me, Marcel, also, what do you think that changed the most in the last two or three years in, in Croatia in the digital ecosystem? So if we have that change, you have a different maturity of the, of the market. Should academy change as well? So I have, again, two questions for you. Not answer. too much, because human psychology is always the same. So people buy online like they bought uh, offline, just the methods and tools are different. So what we are changing is Google Analytics, SEO, and stuff like that. But strategy, digital marketing strategy, uh, I don't know. Okay, legal stuff is changing. We are trying to be up to date. But uh, what we are offering is a change of mindset. What we are offering is... Uh, like a concept, how to start, how to avoid the mistakes, how to uh, speak with developers, you know, uh, some stuff don't change. So to be honest, like 80% of all, all the materials stay the same, but they are sending new people because new people want to know how to, it's, it's for managers, it's not for uh, specialists, it's not for people that want to like build their own web shops. I, I say to them, don't bother paying for this academy. You have Udemy mm. course, you have free YouTube courses. When you come to our academy, you have to know what you are doing already. You have to have a plan, a project. If you don't have it, please don't do it. You know, we don't, we don't want to spoil the experience for somebody, you know. Usually, actually, uh, masterminds or uh, sessions where people are discussing are helping a lot because even if somebody is not on a, such a high level as everybody else, uh, they're helping him to stretch a little bit his mm -hmm. mind and his, let's yes. say, brain muscles uh, to, to catch up with all the information. And uh, I have seen people on a lower level just sitting in the room and uh, listening to other big businesses, let's, let's call them this way, uh, and learning a lot more from their experience and actually from their mistakes because uh, exactly. most probably the, the, best, uh, the best way to, to learn is to just do some stuff and make mistakes. And uh, if you can learn from anybody else's mistakes, it's a lot better, of course. <laughs> also, but masterminds are working great. Also, I want to add, sorry for <laughs> interrupting you, but uh, so I don't forget, a uh, big uh, uh, advantage of this kind of education is you can share the knowledge between your peers be, between students because mm -hmm, those students definitely. are uh, mostly like managers and uh, web shop owners of successful stores. We had a lot of uh, times where uh, from one side it was a web shop manager and from the other side was developer who is building his web shops and they are all on our academy, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also we have competitions uh, company, so it's really interesting. To... Uh, so we have the synergy definitely regarding and collaboration regarding the educational part, but we all here live from the sales and from the money. So let's talk about that part of the, of the synergy and um, uh, you mentioned Marcel previously regarding the cross-border and I think it is super important that we talk about cross-border in Adria region uh, because uh, you said um, Croatia is small market, Serbia, even Bulgaria, like those are all smaller markets. Uh, definitely we would uh, all benefit um, from that uh, synergy. Uh, there are s statistics that says that cross-border in European Union is 25% uh, of overall e-commerce sales, which in um, 
numbers is uh, 171 billion uh, euros in the 2021. So you understand, and it is also, I read that 70% is the growth uh, from the 20, uh, 2020 to 2021, even mm -hmm. after the pandemic. I, I mentioned it again, sorry. <laughs> uh, so you understand, okay, maybe we cannot talk about that big number, but at least in Adria region, we can discuss uh, um, this, uh, this part. Uh, can you tell us, Nicola, maybe um, more about, you have a lot of sales between, uh, cross-border sales between uh, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, and even Greece. Like, let's put that in this uh, East EU region. Uh, do, can you tell us more about uh, that type of uh, cross-border between uh, East uh, region? And uh, do you think it would be good for a Bulgarian market to be the part of this Adria uh, e-commerce, let's say, uh, part? Because uh, I mentioned previously, it is good to be in you know, some West uh, EU markets, but the competition is higher. So if you would enter actually in those of our region, the competition is actually Actually less, and it can be uh, like a good benefit uh, for Bulgari Bulgarian players. And I would also like to hear from you regarding different timing. We have people from logistics here, so it is important to hear how people are reacting to different timing of cross-border uh, deliveries. So once again, you have uh, three questions in one, and I will try to, <laughs> to answer to have all, <laughs> all of them, uh, at, not at once, uh, separately. So first of all, yeah, for us, it's uh, kind of a lot easier nowadays to do cross-border with uh, Greece, uh, Romania, Hungary, uh, because uh, being uh, part of EU is really lowering uh, delivering times. Uh, you know, the, the, the way that uh, goods are crossing borders is uh, much easier nowadays. Uh, I remember the days uh, when it wasn't, so I, I can compare uh, both. Uh, the thing is that uh, it's not... Uh, like it's not easy to do cross-border, but uh, sometimes when you go to a new market, you have to be prepared and uh, your website should uh, look, uh, uh, you know, uh, natively to the, to the guy buying from it. You, you cannot uh, rely on having, first of all, your uh, website on a different language. This is a big issue because Greek language, Bulgarian, Romanian, Hungarian, they're all different. And by different, I mean completely. completely. They, they have nothing in common. So this is the first issue. Then uh, you should uh, be able to, you know, uh, not only write the, the correct language, but also speak the correct language because some words, you know, we, we know that uh, some native things uh, are appearing and uh, you have to be, you have to be uh, ready for that. Um, I can give you a perfect example of a huge Bulgarian business who entered the Romanian market. Uh, they translated, they, every, they did everything great, but uh, they didn't uh, uh, do much sales in the beginning. And they, rea they, they realized that uh, the Romanian market just don't trust this website. Why? Because they're a very big business in Bulgaria, but there are nobody in Romania. So they changed the strategy, they changed the communication, they explained to the customer that they're huge, quite huge, and actually their goods were kind of uh, goods that are usually uh, uh, copied by, uh, uh -huh. by some, uh, some guys. Uh, so the thing is that they, they changed the whole communication strategy. They explained how big they are in Bulgaria and that their goods are real brands. And uh, everything changed for like a week for them. So they start selling pretty well just, for, just by changing the communication. Uh, regarding the the the, 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 deli the delivery times uh, and the interest uh, of uh, businesses coming to Adria, we just had uh, uh, an event in beginning of April called Balkan E-Commerce Summit, where more than uh, 500 people participated from 17 countries. I can tell you that a lot of businesses from Greece, Romania, Bulgaria are interested in new markets and close markets because uh, for us it's very hard to bring our goods all the way to Germany, France, and there is a big competition there, uh, not only from small stores, but also from the big guys like Amazon, Kaufland, all the big marketplaces. So Adria might be, uh, I mean, it's already an interesting 
place to be, Adria region, uh, but we know that uh, because of uh, this uh, EU, non-EU uh, cross-border uh, challenges, let's, let's not call them problems, uh, uh, this is ki kind of hard. So this is probably uh, an area where we should work in and we should uh, try to find uh, a solution. Uh, but even if uh, somebody decides to come here I don't know how it's for you, or vice versa, if somebody from the Adria uh, region wants to uh, come and sell to our region, uh, the delivery time should be pretty quick. People in our area, customers are, you know, they're expecting to place the order, to, to press the, the button for the order, and to hear the, the, the bell rings at the door, so somebody is already ringing, uh, bringing the, 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 the delivery, the, the package. Uh, they expect 24 to 48 hours maximum. So if somebody is coming to our markets, uh, he should definitely think about uh, a fulfillment solution or having its own warehouse somewhere near. And uh, in my opinion, it's kind of uh, easy to estimate where they should be because most of the orders in our region are coming from the capital. So in Bulgaria, it's like 60 to 65 percent. Depends on the mar uh, depends on the niche, depends on the vertical, of course. But 60 to 65 percent of all orders are coming from Sofia, and it's pretty much the same in Bucharest. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ivan, would you feel threatened if uh, the people from Adria region would start uh, selling in Serbia? Do you think it's a good opportunity for? The closed markets uh, we are, especially uh, Serbia, North Macedonia, and Bosnia, maybe. Or you think it's also a good opportunity from the players from Serbia and for this region to start selling uh, uh, in EU, like uh, Marcel said, that 50% uh, of uh, the sales are cross border sales in Croatia? Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting you mentioned that uh, there, that is a coin with two sides as well. So, no, you, no, no, it's okay. okay. I, I will call you this. don't have to can, be a gentleman. I, <laughs> I will continue like this. No, no, don't worry. Um, basically, um, as I said, uh, very, very, very great, uh, very great question. And uh, I think the businesses uh, need that cross border. Uh, I will emphasize that uh, non EU part of the Adria Balkan that uh, we are. GIZ is actually having that project uh, on the SEFTA market. Okay. He, they are trying to loosen up the bureaucracy knot for the cross-border. And what is the biggest obstacle there in uh, bureaucracy part? Yeah, it, every country has it, its own uh, problems, I say. And uh, actually, they are going to boost it towards the EU. So if some of the countries will, in that process, get in the EU, it's not be going to be a problem. But um, I think the major beneficiary is the, the SEFTA market for now, mm -hmm. who actually can maybe hope in the near future to have some, um, how to say, some of the market, some of the part of, of the Adria that you can send uh, cross-border orders. So the custom is the problem at this custom moment? Custom is, the, yeah, the bureaucracy is the problem and uh, delivery in the other countries is another another issue, another topic. Uh, the other uh, the other part of the question is EU, and that is something that we should all hope for. But there is a, how to say there is a, a problem like who lies behind of yeah because we, in in uh, our markets we have a great big players who are going to even boost it more. Mm -hmm. But we have a, a lot of small players who actually will, will not uh, have some gain out of it because the, the, the Serbian buyers will actually try to, to buy cross-border, as, as, uh, as uh, Marcia said. So they, I'm, I'm thinking that a lot of um, uh, uh, younger population who are purchasing, they are going to try to buy from something from Zalando, mm -hmm. Farfetch, that we are now currently in Serbia, we cannot do. So basically... But I you see, Marcel said that actually they don't want... Uh, they are still buying more from the local players. They yeah. would prefer. Yeah. And we in Serbia we would love that we can actually buy from, uh, from outside. Yeah. Okay, uh, you mentioned bureaucracy. What would be that one thing you would ask from authorities? Okay, please change this. 
if we can, if someone can hear us, <laughs> uh, what it would be? Okay, let's start from uh, Nicola. I'm, I hope I won't steal the answer of uh, everybody else, but uh, one thing for sure is uh, the, the way the customs work and all the fees and everything and uh, you know the, the way all the documentation is uh, uh, worked on because uh, this is for sure something that uh, is a big challenge for a lot of businesses is kind of expensive it's not kind of it's always expensive uh, in terms of uh, time documents uh, transport uh, you know, sometimes uh, goods are moved a few times, they're shipped a few times just to be checked or something like this. So this is w one thing. So if you guys, I, I have some other ideas, but if you guys no, want No, continue, to... continue. We have time, so uh, ah. you can add or Marcel can uh, start and then... In that case. Yeah. <laughs> yes, some, something else is uh, like a program. I, I have uh, heard about the programs that are helping foreign businesses when they enter a new market. Uh, for example, you know, they provide them with uh, additional, let's say, funds so, so they can advertise online or something like this. Uh, so this is something that uh, I'm, I'm not sure how good does it sound uh, in terms of, uh, for example, Serbia helping foreign businesses to steal some business from the, from the local businesses. Uh, but uh, they should be some, some ways uh, because, in my opinion, uh, a lot of people in Bulgaria are usually saying, why are you are inviting... Uh, foreign businesses to come here and to see our market, uh, they, will, they will change the market. And I'm always answering, yeah, but this is the whole idea because if the market, if you have more competitors, if the market is uh, better, so you as a company will be better, customers will learn new stuff and you know, they will be more pretentious about the goods they're buying, so this will all, all, all once again, we will increase the quality of our work. So why we don't want to get our market better in, in different ways? You know, it's not all that we are the only ones that can make the, the, the market better. Yeah, that's how I started, that our mentality is like that. Please don't have the collaboration with, 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 the, with the neighbors. So it's kind of a mentality we all have here. But it, it, it's changing. Let's let's say that it's changing Younger because younger population is changing. That yeah, and uh, we see that a lot of businesses are open now to go to uh, different markets and to learn from those markets, but also bring their knowledge to to those markets. So we see that a lot uh, in Bulgaria nowadays because we have, in my opinion, at least a uh, hundred leading stores from abroad, even sport sports vision. You don't you don't know that story. <laughs> Okay, Marcel? Yeah, like Nicola said, <laughs> make it easier for them. Uh, maybe uh, work on some education. Like, uh, if you cannot provide education for sellers, uh, reach to us, to the association, and ask for the help or send us new leads. They, are, they, didn't, they never reached, uh, like we are doing this for eight years. Nobody reached uh, us and asked how we can help. Uh, also, we have a Croatian Chamber of Commerce who, sh who could also uh, help uh, many companies uh, sell online just by sending them the link to our uh, website and uh, free uh, guidelines and stuff like that. And also, and they don't do that. No. You had an opportunity this morning to talk with them. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll skip listening. this topic. Okay. <laughs> I'll skip this topic. Uh, I'll just say that uh, I reached to the Croatian uh, Ministry of Economy once uh, when we launched the portal for online buyers. Uh, that is helping them uh, to check if the website is uh, safe. It's a free uh, website that we uh, built in a collaboration with uh, Scam Advisor, and it, it basically enables anybody to check uh, if the website is uh, safe in like two seconds. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, as I said, most of our uh, retailers are safe, but when, but when uh, there is like uh, Christmas Madness, uh, Black Friday and stuff like that. There is a lot of scammy web websites that are built just to take your credit card. And that's why people are losing trust. And then you have to, I, I have to repeat myself every year, but please people, before you buy anything online, Google the company. If it's a real company, does it have a social proof? Does it have a trust mark reviews, uh, safe payment methods and stuff like that? So we made a shortcut and uh, provided a portal which, which can help them uh, find out if something is safe really fast. And I reached out to the Ministry of Economy, I'll, I'll tell them, 
and I told them, uh, please just uh, push this news, you know, make it available to everybody. And they told me, yeah, okay, we need like six months to check it out if it's okay. I mean, I, I don't have six months. Uh, web, uh, Black Friday is next month. You know, you have to you have to be agile, fast, flexible. They are not. So uh, I don't know. Uh, they should work uh, also if they want to encourage cross-border, they should maybe uh, encourage increasing trust in those companies because maybe in Croatia everybody knows uh, uh, what is uh, EQP or uh, I don't know, uh, any other big retailer. But uh, when uh, he starts selling in Poland or Czech, nobody knows. So you, it has to have some kind of a trust mark, you know. Maybe the government could uh, help uh, build trust like this. I mean, there are so many ways. Uh, I would just uh, ask them to start, just yeah. to be open, you know, <laughs> just to say, yeah. okay, commerce, uh, it's 2023, 20, maybe commerce in Croatia makes sense, you know, maybe we should do something about it. Yeah, definitely. Even, do you have uh, yeah. um, any proposition to the government mm. what they should do? Oof. <laughs> yeah, I agree with, uh, with colleagues. Uh, uh, the trust uh, is a very big issue, even in Serbia uh, and cross-border as well. Uh, I want, want to, do, to emphasize one um, um, in fact when Croatia uh, gets uh, get in the Schengen, a um, couple of uh, big um, uh, delivery or uh, the logistics company, it's better to say that, approached to us uh, and uh, in need to talks, uh, cooperation as well, and when we started talking, we actually saw that they are willingly uh, opening the businesses in Serbia, mm -hmm. so they are going to see what's going to happen in the, in, um, in the region, and now when the Schengen is actually on our borders, they see a business opportunity. So basically they are going to, in a couple of years maybe, uh, offer one key solution for our uh, websites in Serbia, to basically, they are going to do any logistics slash bureaucracy slash customs and even delivery outside of Serbia, which is now a very big problem. So they have a solution for that. And uh, that is additional mi mind changer for us, but also for the market. It will be changed. And just want to emphasize that it's going to be a big issue in a couple of years. So that, uh, how to say that, that time uh, spend between something new in the in the US uh, or the Western countries are are smaller now. I don't know, maybe 10 years ago when something happened in US, US we we're going to wait 10 years mm -hmm. to come to us. But now yeah. that the is trends uh, are, trends two are years. coming uh, trends pretty are fast are because yeah. of social media and all the information that is flying around. Yeah, but trends in, are coming in months. But I'm going to just emphasize even in the Balkan region, just yeah. to emphasize. Because we all here are people who are doing that uh, for a long time, doing this for a long time, and myself is in, in the habit to try that something new. But um, now we see that a lot of merchants is doing that. So it's not a custom thing that... Something we that we're focusing on, but we're pretty much missing is that, uh, and since uh, this is because we are um, focusing on the business uh, side of the, the things, is that uh, probably uh, governments can uh, uh, bring like a education, like a digital education to schools. I'm, I'm pretty sure that everywhere this is happening, but not on a level that uh, actually I'm expecting uh, in general, because I have seen that uh, in high school in Bulgaria, they already have classes for e-commerce, digital marketing, stuff like, like high that. In high school. high school? Yeah, in high school. Uh, but the thing we is that time. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, yeah, I bought some of the the, the books that, that they have. Uh, it's not exactly uh, what I was expecting. Yeah, the level is uh, very low, and I don't know if it's because you know the the, the way the, the the kids are perceiving the information, or it's just the way that. Uh, the information that they have, probably they, because I'm pretty sure that they didn't go and ask any uh, experts on this, so they just uh, uh, took some information, ad adapted somehow, so it can fit in the book, but uh, this is 
another uh, area where we can focus our uh, you know our uh, forces and we can join with the with the countries and with the governments and say okay these guys will be on the uh, work market in six seven years something yes. like this and and we need but this we need those people we need Definitely. those people we need these guys people. to be to be aware of what is going on and to, to have the proper understanding of, of the business of the digital uh, field so why don't you give them uh, some proper education so we don't have to teach them once again because usually when people are coming from high school or university in our businesses we have to start from the very beginning sometimes yes. they know how to use email <laughs> And not not in a good way. Uh, they know some Word and Excel, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So we unlocked the synergy between uh, all of you. I can say I would like to unlock the the synergy with the audience. If you have some questions, it would be good time that you interrupt us now. Anyone? They survive, they stay, but they are still sleeping. Okay. Then uh, I have because we have a few more minutes. I have. Uh, huh? Oh, sorry, uh, I have uh, then uh, questions for uh, you. Uh, I think Marcel mentioned uh, awards, uh, e-commerce awards. Uh, I know that uh, you have awards in, in Bulgaria and in Serbia. How do you think that uh, educate the customers and the business? If you can tell me more about uh, that. I can easily answer how it helps the business because the, our awards are called uh, the stars of the e-commerce and we are searching for the stars and then uh, we are bringing all the good examples from the, the stars or the, mm -hmm. the best businesses to the attention of everybody else. So usually what we do uh, on, a local, on our local conference, uh, we gather the jury and they're explaining, okay, during the uh, process of uh, evaluating your stores, we found this, this, this and this good thing, so uh, why you you're not using why everybody else is not using these examples in in your businesses we are also putting out the bad uh, things that we found without saying uh, the, the names of the stores just to mm -hmm. not just not to offend anybody uh, but how we are educating the the customers um, uh, what what we do is uh, we always have campaigns where the customers are voting for their uh, favorite stores and in my opinion this is not exactly education uh, but by voting and by seeing uh, how the stores are you know communicating and uh, related with their audience we can see that some of them actually uh, you know trained maybe trained is not the exact word because we're training animals but uh, they trained their audiences to uh, to 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 react with them, to participate in their business. So this is uh, something good, in my opinion. OK, great. Who wants to be next? Marcel, tell us more about uh, awards in, in Croatia. Well, awards in Croatia are a little bit different, uh, uh, I suppose, than in uh, Bulgaria. Because uh, uh, to, to be honest, we had uh, one company doing awards before us, so we changed uh, the model, the concept. Uh, they used uh, service among uh, web shop uh, customers and I got an award for the web best web shop six years in a row and it was only two web shops in the competition so it was pretty much you know not 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 real you know and I wanted to do it more realistically so when we are doing awards we have a jury six members of jury that uh, are that have uh, publicly announced the criteria by which they are uh, giving uh, grades for every web shop in each category. And then they, we have uh, one winner in each category. But what's more important is uh, they get a big book full of comments and they know what to fix. And they yeah, are very they, happy They have a it. consultancy as well. It's, it's not only the award. Yes, they, they exactly. Get that's, the, the, that's the main thing. Review. We want to help them improve their web shop on every aspect and also they get to brag about their price if they want to but that's the secondary <laughs> okay and uh, of course in serbia we have to do everything differently yeah. so even <laughs> <laughs> yeah. tell us. Uh, basically uh, our, our e-commerce awards are called the uh, hotspot e-commerce awards and basically divided on two parts one is the for the public um, who actually can uh, support, as you said, uh, Nicola, their um, favorite um, shops 
to, to give, give grades. And the other part is the jury members. We, uh, this year we had um, eight jury members. It's basically eminent experts from the different, different uh, how do you say, niches, different uh, businesses, from uh, educational, uh, economical, uh, media, payments and so the uh, whole digital ecosystem not and uh, only yes and the shops. government as well so we kind of uh, make make the the, the very good ecosystem, small ecosystem on the, on the jury side but the point is to have a uh, that uh, how to say vaga uh, scale balance scale. balance, balance. 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 thanks <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I, 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 I'm glad I could uh, uh, yes. translate uh, Serbian to English Serbian. now. Yes, thank you. Uh, basically, that balance is very, very, very important for us. Uh, as as you know, how much uh, I am much uh, a fan of the of the sheets and the numbers uh, we provided. Actually, when we pronounced the, the winners of some category uh, on the screen, we provided the, the actually voting from the public side and from the jury. And uh, of course, this, uh, the the total numbers that the all participants in that category. Uh, so you cannot buy a word. Sorry. So you cannot <laughs> buy a word. Yeah, the, that is the the main issue: the transparency so, so, as well as. So the, my shoes is, are not coming from that money. It's yeah. <laughs> so else. now I understood why I'm seeing so many pictures on LinkedIn with uh, so many awards in Serbia. I yeah, was, we uh, have uh, 20 categories. It's total. It's not only the best shop, yeah. but we have. Sorry, I yeah. started. I got, I got confused <laughs> no, last time when I saw all the yeah. pictures from uh, your ceremony. I was like, oh, what is going on? They have so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's uh, 20, categories. 22 categories uh, this year, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's good uh, that we exchange the, um, what we were doing in the, in the past and what can we improve, definitely, all yeah. of us in, in the future. And uh, Speaking of awards, it might be a time for something new. Maybe. Maybe something regional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Can you tell us more about those regional projects even you are working on? Yeah, uh, currently we have a couple of. Uh, we have uh, e-commerce for all. That is a uh, GIZ supported the project that was uh, led by e-commerce from Macedonia, mm -hmm. and basically it's a information portal that you every 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 business who wants to start e-commerce in a SEFTA market, can get all the information of any market on, on the website. And um, while we are now currently developing our trust mark, not only in Serbia, but also the, the other countries uh, in the SEFTA market, the, the GIZ proposed uh, something like uh, the regional trust mark could be developed in the, in the, in the future time. So basically, that is the current situation. And, and? Uh, I like to respect the time management, and you know that you got threat by me that I'm going to cut all of you <laughs> if we, we miss the timeline. Uh, thank you all for coming. I know it, it's super difficult to come here after lunch and listen to us, but I may say that those lightning is also super difficult for us to survive. Um, I would conclude that uh, definitely we need something from authorities, but I believe there is much still left we can uh, uh, we can do together and push from our side it can help that uh, synergy in uh, Adria region and uh, let's start pushing everybody in order to have a much better environment and bigger environment for uh, all of us thank you